there's not many scripts that you just read and it's just like, that's a movie. And I want to see that movie. As soon as I read it, I was like, I would love to be in this. Because movies like this aren't really made anymore. Psychological thrillers like this. It wasn't, you know, oh, I need to play this part. I was like, oh, I want to help tell this story. Patricia Highsmith in Europe conjures up, you know, Ripley in movies like that and beautiful, usually American people in some sort of exotic location, in this case, Greece. It's all about what's going on inside the characters. It's, 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 I mean, that's what Highsmith does, which I love, is, is puts you in the bad guy's shoes and makes you feel scared for them. Mr. Dunleavy? No, no, no. I think you get the wrong one. How about Mr. McFarland? None of them are who they present themselves to be. I play a man whose name is definitely not Chester McFarland. This is a man who's had many names. He's with his wife, whose name is not Colette. We don't, we never find out what's the beauty of the story. He's a bit of a swindler and, and uses people for money and we're kind of on the lam. The image you first see, uh, let's say, of this married couple, Gatsby-esque sort of <laughs> couple. Very quickly you start to see flaws in their characters. They're all kind of, not villains, but they're all sort of pretty troubled characters. It's not just my character who seems one thing, becomes another. It's also Kirsten's character and Oscar's character who subvert your expectations, I think, as an audience. He already skimmed his commission. Why else do you think he's helping us? I'm sure it's not just the money. <laughs> no, I think he's also got a thing for you. Is Chester just going mad, or is Rydell really the enemy? Who is the bad guy here? Has, you know, does she have a right to do that? Is she the one that's being played, or is she playing the two of us? She seems, you know, she's lovely, beautiful, but there's a lot going on. It's that sort of slow corkscrew of the tension building up. There is so much subtext going on. It's definitely a lot about what's not said. The camera's always telling story. Who you like when, they, that they surprise you and you're shifting allegiances. It constantly keeps you on the edge of your seat. In the suspense bits, it's very influenced by Hitchcock. You know, that's the way movies used to look. It's a story we haven't seen in a while. All the characters are flawed, and that's why I think it's a true film noir. A real uh, sense of craft and artistry, and just a good yarn. <laughs> Thank you.